Welcome. So good to be with you on this Wednesday or whenever it is that you're watching this or listening to this. Uh, So glad that you've chosen to to take some time out of your day to join us and hopefully um, a little bit of time of of devotional time and and Bible study time to be encouraged and enlightened and hopefully uh, refreshed for either the rest of the week or the beginning of the week or as I said, whenever it is that you're watching this. Uh, Whatever the case, I'm so glad that you've taken the time out to join us today. You know, I'm not sure exactly when it happened. But somewhere along the way, this false idea began to spread that the Christian life is to be understood in in terms of two arenas, two areas, the sacred on one side and the secular on the other. And and they're separated and there's, there's parts of our lives that are sacred and there's parts of our lives that are secular. And so sacred places are are like church buildings and, and sacred events are things like worship and sacred people are things like preachers and pastors and church leaders. And the remainder of life was therefore declared secular. And so farms and stores and schools were secular places and surgery and manufacturing and accounting and teaching and driving and watching TV and all those mundane things, all or seemingly mundane or everyday things, were all labeled secular. And ordinary people doing the routine and humdrum things of life as well are secular. But from the perspective of Scripture, that is so terribly backwards. In God's plan for human existence, it really doesn't make any sense. It does. It just doesn't fit in with what Scripture tells us. In fact, in light of Christ's teaching, our work, as as I think Christ um, shows us and and the Apostle Paul shows us, uh, is is part of our witness. Now, I I can grant that there is a sense of the sacred and holy when believers gather together for worship. That's missing, I you know, or or less than you know, at the very least, from a, a crowded office or a noisy uh, business setting. But work is meant to be sacred too. It's it's sacred by virtue of the divine presence that you bring into it as a person filled with God's spirit and participating in God's creative work. And so sending emails and hiring people and selling goods and stocking shelves and fixing cars and answering phones, these and and whatever other things that you and I or others may be expected to do this week, they're not secular. They're not, that is, unless you misunderstand your role in them. You and I are in this world to continue the work of God, creating, improving, empowering, doing things that we and others will look at and say are good or even very good. Now, in no way, and I don't want you to hear me say that that we should become workaholics. I'm not saying that at all, nor am I saying that we ought to see our worth and our identity in what we do. But instead, what I am saying is that we ought to see ourselves as God sees us. We are extensions of his presence into the nooks and crannies of this world that we live in. The Apostle Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 6 and 7, when it comes to our work, he tells us to work with enthusiasm as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. And surely viewing our work as for the Lord instead of just for people ought to spur us on to take a more elevated view of our tasks in the workplace, whatever they may be. You see, our work isn't an unspiritual curse from which you and I should desire freedom from in order to visit the retreats and the seminars and the workshops on spiritual lives, and then we go back to the secular and the mundane. But rather, it is your lab to turning lead into gold, humdrum into holy by the Holy Spirit presence that you take into your life. Make no mistake, your spiritual life won't be on hold as you work this week, but rather it will be on display. Hope you have a blessed week. God bless.